It's got a bit of paint on it, but that's all right. So this tripod, it sounds a bit like, now this duck, I think that was a Tommy Cooper thing. Uh, this is the Velbon CX530. That's 530, 530 over. When I was in the fire service, I got told this story about somebody who had crashed the Land Rover and they had to ring in control and tell them over the radio. And the message went, QM from Victor 46, I've turned the Land Rover over, over. <laughs> I love that. Anyway, it's the Velbon CX530. This tripod has been with me for over 20 years. I'm not gonna tell you how many years exactly because then you're gonna work out my age. It's been absolutely amazing. And I don't know if they, I don't, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call this video best budget tripod because it, it is, I mean, I don't have a bunch of budget tripods to compare this to. But I'm going to call it that because to me it's the best and it was £30 back in the day so I don't even know if they make them this good and this cheap anymore because I have no reason to go buy another tripod I've got this one but what I love about this tripod and I bought this when I was at school so you're going to all work out how old I am now I bought this when I was at school and it's like, I remember going out at night to do night photography with it. And I had my Minolta 404 SI film camera on this tripod. This tripod went to a wedding that I shot on film. The, the bit that you attach your camera to is actually on the vlogging camera. I've left it on there, so I'm not going to show you that bit. But I'm sure you can imagine what it's like. It's very standard fit. Goes on there. I like, I mean, you know, if I was going to upgrade my tripod, I would get something a bit more robust that's like in high winds, would be a bit more steady. Um, it's not too heavy, this one. But also I would probably go for a swivel, like that ball, the, you know what I mean, don't you? The ball joint swivel um, because with this one obviously you can only go you can go round like that and up like that <laughs> so but what I like about it is it just feels quite solid it's not flimsy and rattly and thin it's solid these really easily come in and out there's no sticking it's not really noisy either like if you were stood and you're about to capture some deer or something you'll probably get away with that sound not scare them away so the feet have never come off i mean over 20 years you know it's still it's still in such good nick like it's still working perfectly i like the color it's a nice color it's got a little green um spirit level thing on there is that check out this vlogging camera how it focuses hopefully it has focused on there that's cool isn't it Great for showcasing products, this vlogging camera. Um, I'm so grateful for this vlogging camera. And that obviously goes up and down there like that. But yeah, like I think, I think it's really easy to want the best all the time. Partly because it's like a pride thing, isn't it? 
Um, but I think, what, what do you want a tripod for? What's the purpose? What's the worst case scenario you're going to be in? What camera are you putting on it? You know? You don't want to get a really, 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 really cheap tripod that's going to blow over with a flipping really expensive camera on, do you? But at the same time, if you don't use it very often, but you might be carrying it long distances, and you're probably not going to use it in really bad weather or, you know, standing in the sea or something where it's going to get knocked over, um, you know, or high winds or really slow shutter speeds, you could literally get away with something along the lines of this. Just, I think if you look up Velbon um, tripods, if they are still making them as good as this, I don't think that you'll be disappointed at all. And this tripod has got a lot of memories with it for me. I did a lot of decluttering when I sold my house and I got rid of a lot of stuff and it was a bit of a um, bit of a wrench but um, now the stuff that I have kept I think I value it more because I've got less you know it's not diluted with so much stuff. This tripod was the beginning of photography for me it was um, something I needed for my for my school course for my GCSE um, I just remember those days so clearly my teacher you know how she used to be so excited to see what I was going to do next and she was in it with me she was excited with me I fell in a river once it was um I think it was called tar steps something like that and there were these stones going through the river it was a really really wide river and I was only about I was probably like 14 or 15 and I was really chuffed because my great auntie had just given me her camera. So I had this new camera, compact camera, but it was really good. Oh, I wish I could see that camera again. Obviously it was film and I, I wanted to get a photo of, I'm sure it's called Tar Steps, I wanted to get in the middle of the river but looking at these at this um, pathway that was going across the river do you see what I mean so I wanted to be in the middle looking at the bridge from the middle of the river and I said to mum and dad I'm just gonna go down there they're like oh be careful so I stepped down off the bank and I was like tiptoeing across on these stones to get to the middle but I didn't want to get my feet wet you know so I was trying to stand on these stones that were wet and slippery and and um, I did slip and I fell in and the camera went under the water that was not a good day for me I was absolutely so devastated I didn't know how I would like how do you say to someone who's just given you a camera oh I've dropped it in water I was having the time of my life before I blooming fell over <laughs> I've gotten myself into some interesting positions trying to get a good shot it's a shame we weren't allowed to take photos in the fire service because when we used to go to shouts I always used to think what incredible photography I could have got, you know. I love smoke and light. And very often we'd get a call out at like four or five o'clock in the morning to a fire and, you know, it might be um, like a barn fire or something like that and, and we'd end up being out at the time of the sunrise and so you'd have the sunrise and the and the light piercing through the smoke of the fire and just the flames and some tree or whatever it was and I always used to think oh if only I could take a picture but we weren't allowed to been at a, I'd been at a thatch fire all day literally all day I had dermatitis from my kit rubbing on my wrists and 
I mean, it was just a case of salvage as much of their stuff as possible before the building collapsed. Like, honestly, I was going in all the drawers and getting out all the photos that I could find to salvage. And we had to put them in this garage, somebody else's garage over the road. I remember it was a race against time to salvage as much as we could before the ceiling collapsed. And then when we left there, we were on the way home in the pump and we were all absolutely shattered because we'd been there all day. They, they couldn't get relief crew in. So we'd been there for, you know, best part of eight hours, nine hours, you know, he moving stuff in heavy kit in the rain. I think it was raining that day as well. It was raining because I remember getting dermatitis and I was soaked. I was absolutely soaked. And um, we were just nearly home. It was like, do you know what? It could have been more like 10 hours we were there. Anyway, we're going home and we're going up the dual carriageway back to the town and the radio, we were like, oh no, the radio, what, what's that, what's that? You know, we heard the little click of the radio and it was control. Even though it's so long ago, I still remember how they did the radio messages. So they'd say something like um, QM, no, oh, actually I can't remember. Um, Romeo 46, you receiving over. Right, so we'd be like, go ahead over, receiving, go ahead over. And then they would say, Romeo 46, please confirm your location. And then we would, we said, oh, we, you know, we're on the dual carriageway, but whatever road, the driver or the, the officer in charge was on the radio saying that. And I'm sat in the back going, oh, here we go. And then it was, and then it was, Romeo 46, proceed to... Like those two words, proceed to, will never leave me. I'm sat in the back, absolutely shattered, and I hear Romeo 46, proceed to, barn fire. Oh my life. Whenever we got a shout to a barn fire, we knew we were going to be there for hours. And I actually used to get quite excited. I know that sounds a little bit odd, but I used to think, oh yeah, it's a little adventure. We can sit and watch the fire together. <laughs> Because at a barn fire, you couldn't really do much about it because if it's like, say, a load of hay, hay, you can't, you, very often you would just damp down what you can save, but you just let it burn because it it's quicker than trying to put it out very often. So we always knew that a barn fire, we were there for the long haul, you know. And so when we got this proceed to, I'll never forget it. We got there and there was more hay bales than you could ever imagine, all just piled up so, so, so high. And the sun was setting at this point. So we've been out since I think it was like sunrise on the first job. And now the sun was setting and we're on the second job. And we got there and we just looked at it and we're like, we're going to be here all night. We are literally going to be here all night because it was absolutely huge. And we knew because where we lived in Wiltshire, all the other pumps would be at, still at the other job. You know, we knew that we were gonna be there for ages, but I'll never forget it. I just wished I'd had my camera, but it's etched in my mind, this vision. The, the hay bales are really, really high. And I said to one of the lads, I, I got to climb up there to see, to get, a, you know, to, for the view. They were like, really? You've got to climb to the top of the hay bales that are on fire? I'm like, yes, I need to. So um, I managed to somehow climb up. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> Put it on my YouTube channel. Um, so I managed to climb up to the top of the hay bales. And honestly, what a sight. It was just, if you can imagine, the light was coming across the hay bales low because the sun was setting. And then you had the smoke coming off the hay bales. You had like the detail of the hay would have been in the foreground. And then you had the smoke wisping off. And then this beautiful sunset in the background. But it was huge. It was vast. It was like, it was just massive. And it was out in the country. So it was, it really would have made such an amazing photo. Anyway, that's my tripod review. I hope you enjoyed it and um, I'll see you again soon. Bye.